It says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news, the gospel I preached to you before. Paul never stopped preaching the gospel. Somebody says, I heard this before. You got to hear it again. He's at the end of, the, of his letter with first, in 1 Corinthians. This is one of his first letters, possibly his second. But some, because some people say that he may have wrote three letters to the Corinthian church, as alluded in some of the other epistles. Well, what he's saying is, I'm reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel, the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. He's saying, still stand firm in this. He says, it is the good news that what? Saves you if you continue to what? Believe the message I told you. So everybody that talks about this, John 3, 16, if God so loved the world that he gave his God, so did for whosoever believes in him. Do y'all understand? It says, for whosoever believing in him, which means continually believe. Not just this one time I believe in Jesus. I know, okay, cool. I'm good. Now I'm just going to live a life of sin. No. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, if you believe in this good news, it saves you if you, did y'all see the if you, if you continue, if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. And see, that's where this gospel has been preached incorrectly. That's where we have false teaching, false preachers. We have a false gospel that's out there, guys. That many, many, the Bible says in the last days, they will what? Depart from the what? True faith. Three, I pass on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He didn't die to, for us in our sins, amen? He died so that he could save us from our sins. He says died for our sins, just as the scripture says for. He was what? Jesus was buried. Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen, Jesus was seen by Peter and, the, and by the 12 disciples. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers. At one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen, Jesus was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as Though I had been born at the wrong time, Paul is saying, I also saw him, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. We know the story of Paul, all right? He's humbly a servant, a slave to Christ, amen? For Christ was the one that appeared to him in that road to Damascus as a bright light, right? In the glory of the Lord and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Amen. And so we know that Paul has given and devoted his life to Christ, right? He's the one, same one that says, for to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay. This is Paul speaking. But this is, this is a uh, uh, first Corinthians 15 and 10. It says, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of these of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God. It is not I, but God. You guys have to understand, it is not really going to be you, but it's going to be God working through you by what? His grace. That's what you got to understand. When we are doing things in God, it's really God's grace by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is grace. That's why I said it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will Amen. receive power. It's not your power. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. You're just yielding to that power. Amen. That's why he's trying to tell us, hey, yield and be led by the Spirit. Those that are led by the Spirit, please God. We are the sons of God. Amen. Sons meaning in heirs. To what? A kingdom. Okay. We're demonstrating the kingdom of God through what? Through, through, through being led by the spirit, being obedient to the spirit. You're seeing the kingdom of God. Now, what does he say? He says, yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach for we all preach the what? Same Amen. message you have already believed. Hallelujah. Now, he says, but tell me this, 
since we preach that Christ rose from the dead. See, remember, Paul has been preaching about the resurrection. That's why he got scoffed at in Athens. Now, check this. He says, we preach that Christ rose from the dead. Okay? Why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? He says, for if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been ra raised, then all of our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles would be all would all be lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is use useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if, all, and, and if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. What he's saying is there are a bunch of people who are saying there was no resurrection and people are actually starting to believe in it. He's like, dude, that is the very, very hope of our glory. We all believe we're going to be resurrected from these carnal, deathly lives, and God is going to reestablish what? Eternal life for humanity. That that is a part of the kingdom right there. Amen? That our hope is in Christ. If we don't have the resurrection, then our hope is lost. He's saying we should be the most pitied of anybody in the world. That's how people look at it. Oh, look at them pathetic Christians. They believe their Savior is coming back. Man, when he shows up, when Jesus comes back, y'all, the Bible says that people are going to be running, not to the hills for their help. They're going to be running to hide in the caves when they see the appearing of the Son of Man because they know they messed up. They know they messed up. You see, that's what compels me. Because when I look at my family, when I look at my cousins, when I look at my people, and I'm telling y'all right now, y'all watch this. If y'all my family, hit me up in the spirit. If you know God is talking to you, you want to grow in your relationship or you want to know what it really means to be born again, anyone out there, we need to be that for you. We will show you that Christ is the way, the only way. And if you know you're called and being a part of this, you need to grow in God. You've got to live the resurrected life. You cannot have this boring, dull, I only care about this world. And I doubt that's, that's false, guys. That's false. God is trying to give us a wake-up call today, tonight. He's saying, I want you to live this resurrected life. We're preaching the gospel. We're being this. is not just something you say, but you live it out. All right. It says 20, but in fact, Christ is raised from the dead. He says, he is the first of a great harvest of all who have died, okay? So Christ raised, so now we all expect what? Everyone that's died and believed in Christ shall also what? Inherit life, but how? What's gonna happen to them? What's the significance? They over, okay, so if anybody being Christ is a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all things have been new. So they were talking about all this stuff. Those people died, okay? Their bodies died. Have their bodies been raised up yet? See, that's the thing. The Bible says that, see, check this out. Let's keep reading. Naima, I don't know how far you've gotten. She probably looked like the whole, the whole area. But here's the thing. It says, so you see, just as death came into the world through a man, that man was who? Adam. Now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, Jesus. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given what? New life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Hallelujah. Christ, let, let everyone say order. order. God of order. God is a God of order. This is how he does it. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. What are we talking about? The harvest of God. The Bible says that God in heaven is the Lord of the harvest. Okay. Then all who belong to who? Christ will be raised when he comes back. So when Christ comes back, his second coming, not the rapture, his second coming, what it says here is that people are going to be raised back to life. Y'all heard that, okay? The ones that belong. It says, after that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every what? Ruler and authority and power. By the way, that is at the end of the thousand years. 
Okay, he's going to destroy what? Every ruler and authority and power. He's not talking about just the Antichrist and the beast. He's talking about Satan. He's talking about death. He's talking about Hades. Every, all of them are going to get thrown into the lake of fire. It says, for Christ, 25, for Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. Paul is talking about what now? We went from the gospel to what now? The gospel of the kingdom. See, this is the totality of everything that Christ is really representing on this earth. He's representing to the totality of God's kingdom and his will and his purpose. Then I know it seems like it's just, man, it's just a pretty story to tell on Sunday to everybody. All the little Sunday kids and everybody gets so excited about, you know, Resurrection Sunday. And they think it's about Easter eggs and a bunch of goofiness like that. No. This is about God's kingdom reestablishing itself on the earth and not being severed by any unseen entity or being dismantled by a thing we call sin and evil. God is taking care of all this because it is his what? It's his good pleasure for all things were created by him and for him. Meaning this is God's mysterious plan. This is God's gospel. This is the secrets of the kingdom of God being unfolded right here. And I know people out there, I know you guys included, y'all may have heard this, but y'all didn't hear it like this before because God is trying to open our eyes up to more than what, what really meets the eye or what meets the, uh, what, what we see. All right, let's read the rest of this so we can be encouraged, okay? It says this, 25, for Christ must reign. How long does he reign? A thousand years until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is who? Yeah. Death, not Satan, death. For the scriptures say, God has put all things under his authority. Of course, when it says all things are under his authority, that does not include God himself, who gave Christ his authority. Then when all things are under his authority, the son, Jesus, will put himself under God's authority so that God, who gave his son authority over all things, will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. As other translation says, God will be in all and above all, the whole nine, all right? 29, if the dead will not be raised, what point is there in people being what? Baptized for those who are dead. It says, why do it, why do it unless the dead will, raise, will some die, someday rise again? And why should we ourselves, we risk ourselves, or sorry, and why should we ourselves risk our lives hour by, the, by hour? He's saying, He's saying, basically, us as apostles, they risk their lives every time. You got to understand what they do. They go out and they start a new work. If people don't want them, guess what? They get killed or they get hurt. They get beaten. That's what happened to the apostle Thomas. He went to India, but he got killed. He got martyred. But the gospel is still inside of India. There are people out there right now that actually serve God because of his witness, because of that sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So he's saying, we risk our lives hour by hour. For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily. He says, this is as certain as my pride in Christ Jesus. And, sorry, this is as certain as my pride in what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done in you. And what value was there in fighting wild beasts, those people of Ephesus? Wow. <laughs> if there will be no resurrection from the dead. He says, and if there is no resurrection, let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. By the way, he's quoting somebody else, okay? He's quoting like a, a cultural person of that time so they understand. He says, don't be fooled by those who say such things for bad company corrupts good character. You guys know that word, right? Bad company corrupts good characters. That's why I say we need to be very careful who we're around, period. It, God's word doesn't lie. You're around bad company. It will corrupt that good character. It says, think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. Think carefully about what is right. That's why it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Stop sinning, meaning you can stop. It. it says, for to your shame, I say to some of you, some of you don't know God at all. All right, keep reading. But someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? And this is where we get into fruit, okay? Look at God and look how he deal deals with this. What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. When you put a seed into the what? Ground. Ground. See how we're coming full circle, right? He talks about seed being planted. Now check this out. Paul says, when you put a seed into the ground, it doesn't grow into a plant unless it what? 
dies. dies first. And what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. Then God gives it what? The new, the new body. body he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Similarly, he says, similarly, there are different kinds of flesh. One kind of for humans, another for animals, another for birds, another for fish. There, all, there are also bodies in the heavens and bodies of the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. The sun has one kind of glory, while the moon and stars each have another kind. And even the stars differ from each other in their glory. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when, they di when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will also be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies for just as the, they are natural bodies, they are also spiritual bodies. The scriptures tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, is what? A life-giving spirit. This is the gospel, guys. It says what comes first is the natural body. Then the spiritual body comes later. After, it says, Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like what? The mm -hmm. heavenly man. That's why the Bible says, when you see Jesus, you will be like him. He's not figuratively saying that. He's saying, literally, we are new creations. We are really going to look like Jesus. That is a real bona fide statement. You could take that to the bank. It says, look, 50, what am I saying, dear brothers and sisters? It is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the what? Kingdom, Kingdom of God. God. That's why the Bible says flesh and blood, that God. same flesh that we take care of our makeup and we do our hair and we do all that stuff, get our haircuts. Look, that body is in you right now. That body you're wearing will not go into the kingdom of God. So, like I said before, y'all care so much about your eth ethnicity. I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and I'm... No, forget all that. You are more than your skin color. You are more than your ethnicity. You are a new creation in Christ. That is your real identity. Not the bodies, not these tombs, not these, well, temples for us, tombs for others. But I'm saying that God is saying these are tents. These are temporary things. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. The eternal age we're going to go into will not last forever. Meaning in the bodies that we try to, God cannot bring these old messed up vessels into the new kingdom. All right. This is a, the gospel of the kingdom right here. It's unfolding. These are the secrets. He says, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. I'm like, man, Paul, you already demonstrating all the secrets, but here's the secret. We will not all die. Hallelujah. But we will all be what? Transformed. Every single born again believer will be transformed. It says it will happen in a moment. In the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown, this is the coming of Christ, guys. I know what people say it was the rapture. No, coming of Christ. It's not the rapture, guys. Listen, it's the coming of Christ. Christ is coming. Amen. It says, for when the trumpet sounds, by the way, it's not a secret. The whole know, the whole world will know this. Many people think that this is some secret event. It's not a secret event, guys. It's out there. When, when God sets this thing up, the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died, he's talking about the people who died in Christ, will be what? Raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into what? Immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. This is really going to happen. Death will be swallowed up in victory. It says that's what Christ did. It says, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. That's the whole problem God is taking care of. 
and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death. Through who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel in a nutshell. He gives us victory over the sin that plagues our lives and humanity and death, the very thing that God never intended for humanity. That's what the gospel is, guys. That's what the gospel of the kingdom, that is, that is what has been bestowed upon every single person here. God has put that. That's what he says, that, uh, that we are supposed to be stewards of the oracles of God. This is the oracles. These are the secrets. These are the things that everybody, humanity is trying to shut you up. Why? Because the kingdom of darkness don't want to get this out. They don't want you to get this out because that they know this is how you overcome. When you understand, the Bible says that the people, what? My people die for the lack of knowledge, right? This is a part of it. It says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be what? Strong and immovable. You need to be strong in your faith. You need to be immovable. Meaning that nothing should mess you up in your walk. Amen? It says always do what? Always work enthusiastically. Meaning that you should be excited for the Lord. You should be always working for the Lord. It says, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever what? Useless. Meaning in whatever we do, it's not in vain, guys. If you do something for the Lord, it's not useless. God wanted all of us to understand the kingdom of heaven today. The kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. That Jesus is all a part of this. He gives us victory over sin and death. And he wants us to be able to explain it, to share it, to live it out, and to await the fulfillment of this full gospel. Amen? Amen. So, Lord, I, I bless, I, I just pray a blessing right now over everybody that's heard this today, and we'll hear it later. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you open the eyes of every single person today and, and, and tomorrow to really know the truth of your gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, we